Exactly. <laughs> That's the fun of it. Oh God, yeah, I love that. It's just you know, c- cooking, cooking by smell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who needs recipes? Stuff. It is. <laughs> I found you guys are going to be troublemakers in oh, Colorado. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> you think? <laughs> see it now. I oh, like geez. I like exotically <laughs> spiced meats. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of a good methylin and um, exotically spiced meads are interesting because you know it's hard to get that balance, and yes, so it's, yes, it's, it's a bit of an art actually, form, you know. Yeah, and, and it's funny because you know part of our inspiration for for doing our flavor combinations, you know, is, is Dogfish Head, which you know was one of our favorite beers here, and oh my God. it Nick seems like the they have the same kind of like weird combination idea. Well, what um, is and, it? And we're uh, trying to bring. Off-centered Meat brewing, world. is that what they call it? Got it. Yeah. <laughs> We're off-centered eating. I love Sam's book, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an awesome book. Um, and actually, you know, it, it's funny, that, that actually reminds me, you, you were talking about history, and um, did you see, and I don't know if the, the details are really online, um, of the flavor we just came up with a little while ago called Glocktoberfest? Glocktoberfest? Yeah, I don't know if it's online because it was kind of a special edition we released right before Thanksgiving. But uh, Terry is um, culture-wise from Sweden. Okay. Her family is, is, is from Sweden. And she's made glog, or what they sometimes pronounce as glurg. Oh, I love glurg. Um, around the holidays every year from um, the, the – but doing the, the hard liquor version with the aqua. Well, yeah. Yeah. Glog and in my we, family we has adapt- got so much alcohol about kill you. <laughs> yeah, the same with her. The same with her stuff, which you know is not so bad, but it's not that tasty. Um, so we we took her recipe and basically tweaked it and made it a re a mead recipe, and have a mead glog hybrid nice. that we put out over the holidays. That was awesome, Fun. And, and got huge response. Actually, we, we I think we have one case left, and then we're done for the season. Oh my gosh! Uh, might have might have to have you hold that, a bottle I, of that for me to get up there and get her find some way to get it to me or something yeah. like that <laughs> well actually you know we're going to bring some special stuff over to uh to mazer oh there so, you go uh, yeah bring that, bring a bottle of that with you i'd love to try it we will bring it along yep. are you, terry are you coming yep. out too absolutely i good. wouldn't miss it good we'll tear the place up oh god right. <laughs> drink, we'll drink a lot of glock toberfest there, we'll, we'll there we go there we go am i gonna shaft to chaperone you too I know all the best parties. Uh, yeah, chaperone you, too. <laughs> you don't want to chaperone me. If you rein me in, then how will you find all the best parties? Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm the kind of trouble you want to have when you go to places like that. I'm oh, sure. It, just by the fact that you said that means that uh, I don't. I'm a little cautious there. Well, I did. I did help. I did help put the thing together. So you know, I kind of got an inside track to a certain extent. But uh, <laughs> true, true. Yeah. But, okay, oh, I gotta ask. Did Did you apprentice with anybody either for you know running your own business or for meteries? Well. Uh, Again, we, we, we had some very, very nice guidance along the way from the guys at Colony. Um, Mike and Greg were just awesome. Um, I, I happened to be lucky enough to have a father that, that had his own business growing up, and I started, when I got out of college, uh, my own business back about uh, 15 years ago. So I'm familiar with the business world, familiar with um, accounting legalities, you know, how things go to, to have a business. And Terry has an accounting background. So with my science, her accounting, and some business background, uh, it, it wasn't that hard starting this. But I can definitely see that um, starting from scratch of someone that just is maybe a home mead maker definitely could be could be a big challenge. Hmm. That's, cool. where the, uh, that's where the UC Davis mead making classes are handy. Definitely, yeah. I've, I've seen some of the write-ups on that, and I, I wish we were closer. <laughs> I Terry know, and I too. have uh, looked up some of the some of the programs and we're like drooling to get out there it's just a little bit of a hike uh, maybe someday oh yeah yeah it's definitely worth going i mean if you can get out there i would i would strongly recommend it they uh, i went to the very first one they put on and it was i, I just kind of sat there with my mouth open taking notes as fast as i possibly could <laughs> I, I could see that yeah yeah nice now you've got this meadery to take care of though right <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Now, now we got uh, pretty much seven days a week, two full time jobs. Um, things, things are kind of rocking here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's it's fun. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm loving to kind of see this whole thing grow and, and see the profession grow, and you know, kind of be in something that's pretty special. It yeah, it really is. The industry is it's so in, it's so interesting because I can step back to when I first got into this and there wasn't a meadery to be found anywhere. It was a wasteland, really. You know, I mean, we had some meads, but there just wasn't very many. And um, there, some of the ones were pretty good, but again, hard to come by. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and it's funny because you now I'm stepping into this very late in the game. And, and even from my perspective, you know, in, in within about a hundred mile radius, there's Colony up in Allentown, there's um, Charm City down in Baltimore, and, and that's about it. Um, you know, when John opens his place, yeah, will be another John's one around here. But yet. yeah, you know, <laughs> as opposed to the the breweries that you know, you go down every street and you can see another microbrewery. Um, <laughs> we're yeah. a lot scattered. Well, there's about a half so a dozen cr- meteries in Virginia. And yep. four yep. or five yep. in New York, four or five in Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah, kind of surprised New Jersey. I mean, uh, Sergio Melavino, they, they've got some great stuff. Oh, um, God, I'm yeah. surprised there aren't more. I think maybe I think you know I, I wonder sometimes if Sergio hasn't got like a hit squad out there. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping Jersey to himself. Well, I, I, you know? I think he is Italian, so you know. No, he's Portuguese, actually. <laughs> oh, is he really? He's Portuguese. Yeah, no, in he... fact, he's. Uh, I think he's first generation born here, Portuguese. And he's the black sheep, yeah, right? Because he did mead instead of wine. Um. Well, yeah. yes and no. I mean, making alcohol is a big deal in his family, so you know he comes he comes by it. You know, he comes by it honestly, but. Uh, there's, from what he's told me, there's a fair amount of input from the family on the stuff that he's doing. So they're giving him feedback, which is good, you know. Nice. Yeah, similar to my family where it's drinking alcohol but not, not making it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, we, we went early on and visited uh, uh, Sergio up there and met him and, and talked to him. And uh, uh, nice guy, great stuff. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky. We've got some very, very great high quality stuff in this area yeah yeah there really is there really is a lot of good stuff. well there's just a lot of good stuff all over the country i i you know if i look if i look back over the years because i've been judging mean since the 90s um and you know we used to get a lot of the commercial meads were well not as good as they are today probably the best way to put it (laughs) um and that you know because they didn't i and i think a lot of it was that people didn't really know what good was you know, yeah, true. They, you know, they were still kind of feeling their way through exactly what is good. And the longer we went, and as more things happened, and we had uh, um, Redstone, David at Redstone, put on the International Mead Festival, and we had lots of home mead makers, and then we had a few pros, and then we had a few more, and then we had a few more, and pretty soon we had a pretty good number of them. And it was about 50 50 quality wise. Um, there were some really awesome uh-huh. ones, but there were also some real dogs in there, you know. And, um, then the more and more we got, I mean, the quality level has gone up about 10,000% as a percentage of the total of meads available. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, are you guys selling your meads outside of, uh, of the, uh, the tasting room? Are you distributing at all? And unfortunately, not, not yet. Um, Delaware is a little bit of a backward state when it comes to some of the um, laws and, and rules here. Um, and although we do have four restaurants that are carrying our product, they have to come to us to purchase everything. Oh, really? Um, the, the distributors here um, take a pretty hefty cut um, of between 20 and 30 percent of uh, profits. And we're, we're trying to keep our numbers down right now and make it reasonable so we can, we can get our name and get our brand um, kind of established. And then we're hoping somewhere in the next year. To, to probably get with the distributor and, and, and get out into the public more. But at least right now, just to get our feet on the ground and to get things more established, uh, we're just selling everything out of uh, our place, which right now is actually working fine. Cool. That's you guys great. need to band together with John once you get open and you know, like maybe go to bat with the state legislature to get you know fairness of distributing or some such like that. 
Uh, we're, we're trying, and actually, as as you speak there, uh, tomorrow we're going to a legislative event down in uh, Dover, Delaware, and we're going to be introducing a lot of legislatures to, to Mead. So good. Uh, good, good timing with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sergio's done good stuff in Jersey. I mean, he's gotten some things taken care of, and now there's uh, Washington. has got something going before their legislature. Actually, Thursday it's being heard. And, um, right. yeah, Washington Mead Alliance is uh, working on that one. And, you know, it's it's happening. It's slow, but it's happening. Yep, true, true. And just step by step, it's all baby steps. Exactly. Every step is, I I used to tell my, my marketing, well, I still tell my marketing clients, and they moan and groan about how fast things are going. It's like, look, every step you take is a step. No matter how big or small it is, it's still a step. you got to look at it that way. Not everything is going to move you forward huge, you know. Or, or as our president likes sure. to say, bigly. You know, um, bigly. Yeah, he actually <laughs> said that in a press conference. It was like, oh, I can't believe you did that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna go move to Canada now. Uh, <laughs> I have a spare room. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> believe me, that's in the back of my mind. Things go to heck in a handbasket. You're gonna find a 43 foot RV in your backyard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Might have to park it at my mom's, but that, yeah. That's a, We'll talk to your mom first, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, do you guys do you guys uh, filter and stabilize? Uh, you know, some some people are like all natural. Others do other things. What's your what's your process? As much as you're willing to share. Uh, yeah, with, with the uh, biochemistry background, um, filtering and stabilizing is has got to be the way to go. Okay. Um, you know, if, if we're going to be uh, ensuring that uh, our, our bottles don't explode on the shelf and, um, mm-hmm. you know, m- make sure that, you know, <laughs> everything turns out perfect. Um, y- you gotta, you gotta work with science. I mean, I've been dealing a lot with, uh, the guys over at Scott labs in uh-huh. Colorado and, uh, use some of their products and, uh, just top notch stuff. Yeah. Um, they're, they're very, giving very a talk happy. on filtration at the Mazer cup con- or at the Amer- uh, MMA conference. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, is it uh, Maria? It's Maria, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I've talked to her on the phone a bunch of times. It sounds like a great person. It'd be nice to meet her. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So um, how are you, how are, you uh, are you getting any dropout, you know, in your shelf stuff? Um, what do you mean? Uh, you know, uh, stuff floating Sediment. on the bottom. Sediment, yeah. Um. Sorry, we don't know that word here. We, nah. we don't have any sediment. <laughs> I kind of figured that'd be your Good answer. Good to hear. It's a problem for no, some we, meteries, we, you know. I mean, they, they don't, Yeah. They, yeah. they aren't getting it there, so. <laughs> it, it is tough. I mean, meat, meat is a stubborn little bugger. Um, and actually, it's funny, you, you commented on sweet nothing. Um, sometimes the sweet nothing, just the, the regular show mead, is, is some of the most stubborn little bugger to, to get to settle out and um, get everything out so it, it turns out, you know, crystal clear at the end. Um, but uh, we, we filter all the way down to, to 150 and uh, 150 microns, and um, everything is, is turning out really well. And then once we get into liquor stores, uh, we're, we're going to try to go down and get sterile. Um, so hopefully without pulling any flavor out, uh, cross our fingers. No, that'll be an experiment. And, and you know, you're a yeah. biochemist, yep. so that's okay. Yeah. Yep. We'll make it work. Right. So, um, how are you doing your stabilization then? Um, you know, the, the typical uh, sorbate and sulfate. Okay. Um, and just to try to try to stay as as <laughs> as less as we can, um, but but still be effective. Yeah. Um, well, we I also mean, use some of the you know Scott Lab products are, are great for for helping pull things out, and they've got great stuff. He's a walking commercial hmm. for Scott Labs. <laughs> you know what? If it works, they That's deserve right. it. Yeah. Hey, no, Scott yeah, Labs exactly. is famous for a reason. <laughs> yep. And uh, you know what? The more mead makers uh, play with the the best stuff, the more everybody's products will uh, be top notch. And you know, the, the the wine and beer industries are in trouble. Yeah. Well, the more research everyone does, the better for everyone who's doing it. Yeah. I've said it a thousand times, a rising tide floats all boats. If we're all in this one together, you know, I mean, and, and our industry is going to grow if we all pull together to do good stuff, you know. 150%, yeah. Mm-hmm. Big time. Okay. 
So let's so switch over up? from. Well, okay, go ahead, AJ, and then we're gonna then we're just, gonna pick his brains about making mead and start just talking shop. 